this is, I think, my fourth time here. Um, I came way back in 2000, and then I've come two or three times in the last two or three years. Um, I met Elmer Kelton the first time in 2000 and really enjoyed meeting him. And I know quite a few of the folks who are on the program, so uh, it's a good chance to come down and reacquaint with them. And, you know, that's what poets do. We drive 10 hours to read for 15 minutes, you know. I mean, uh, it's, it's, a, we, it's a good chance to meet with other folks and hear what they're doing and re renew your acquaintances with your friends. It's a, there's a writing community, you know, it basically is. You kind of see each other when you go around to different places, and uh, that inspires your own work and also uh, uh, helps renew, you know, the, the reasons we're doing this to start with. And uh, so that's, that's a lot of it, really. It's really a lot of fellowship, as well as intellectual stimulation, but it's really a social thing, too. Well, um, I have seven books of poetry published, um, and well, the seventh one will be out next week. I have a couple books on uh, e-books also. Um, I did a lot of critical writing and still do a scholarly agenda, but uh, the creative work started when I was, after I finished my doctorate work. And so I've been writing poetry seriously for about, how old am I? Yeah, for about 15 years. It came later. And uh, so I've had, you know, some uh, success with that. And uh, I've been fortunate to win a few awards. Not that awards is the most important thing. It's not, but it's nice to be recognized for your work. So. Um, I don't see book awards as winning and losing. I see it as uh, being uh, recognized. Uh, I mean, if there's five people and you're in the finalists for the book award, they're only going to choose one, right? <coughs> so it doesn't, and it comes down to the taste often. So I don't mind losing to someone who's got a really good book. But it's more, and when I win, it's, it's being acclimated, it's being recognized, because I don't see that as winning and losing. Um, there's a lot of competition in writing, but I think that it's counterproductive in the long run. It, it doesn't produce the best results, in my opinion. It certainly doesn't inspire me, I know that. Uh, so, I've been fortunate. I've been able to do readings all across the country, and uh, been able to... Uh, have my work featured on NPR and on a variety of other regional awards and, and that's most satisfying because people affirm that what you're doing is, is worthwhile. Read, read. Uh, it's amazing how many young writers think they can short circuit that process and it's just, it's just not possible. I mean, you may have some interesting experience from childhood, you may have some trauma, you may have some moment of brilliance, but it's not going to last. That's, that one thing is insufficient to make a sustained depth. And uh, everybody, anybody can throw something out on the internet and be a writer, but that's not really writing. Writing re implies that somebody else outside of you gets it and affirms it. They don't have to even like it, but they get it and affirm that it it's something that becomes something outside of yourself. And for it to have longevity, it has to have depth. And to have depth, you have to have a soul. And to have a soul, you have to read and experience. You, you know, we just, there's no such thing as a shallow writer. A shallow writer is not really a writer. They just put words on paper. It's called uh, Not Quite Pilgrims, and it's published by uh, virtual Artist Collective in Chicago, and it's supposed to be delivered to me by March 1st, so uh, it's in process. I got the, the note in the mail. It's coming. Excellent. So, yeah, right. I'm excited about that.